You've got the concepts in your hip pocket. It's time to walk through the configuration of each of the first hop redundancy protocols, HSRP, VRRP, and GLBP. Well, before we just jump on the routers and start configuring, let's, let's talk about this scenario. I've been using this diagram all along to describe first hop redundancy protocols, so that's what I've set it up as. I've, I've actually got a client connected to a switch with a couple routers, and this I've defined as the 10.1.1.0 subnet, slash 24. He is dot .100. Uh, this router is dot .1. We'll call this router 1. Uh, this guy, router 2, is dot .2 on that subnet, and his default gateway is pointing to dot .1. Right, so he's going out there. So in essence, there's already a problem because he's saying I'm going here, and if he goes down, I'm stuck. I have to have my default gateway changed. Now on the other side, uh, I've set this up a little more practical than a cloud. Uh, this guy is going to be the 10.1.2 subnet. Same situation with router one and router two. We've got dot one and dot two, uh, but in, instead of the cloud, I've put a server in place here, and he is going to be 10.1.2.100, also with the default gateway pointing to 10.1.2.1, right? So let me show you the topology, whoa, in, uh, in GNS3. Uh, there we go. So this, this is, in actuality, what it looks like. Now, the client and the server are really a router, just with their icon swapped out, but I've, I've really uh, stripped them down to where they act just like a client and a server. Let me just share with you how I did that. Uh, you can go to any Cisco router, um, and by default, uh, let me do a show run, I'm gonna do include IP routing. Uh, by default, uh, every router has a command in global configuration mode that says IP routing. Uh, by typing in no IP routing, you're essentially telling the router, don't be a router. <laughs> be an end device. Just just be there. I'll, I'm going to give you an IP address, but don't actually route packets. So at that point, you can see I'm going to do a show IP route. It doesn't really have a routing table. It just allows you to go assign a default gateway. I've done that by going into global config mode, and I'm going to do uh, IP, let's just do include IP, uh, and typed in the command IP default gateway 10.1.1.1, and that's from, from global configuration mode. And that says, okay, I'm, I'm not a router because I've got no IP routing and I'm sending everything to 10.1.1.1, which is, you know, from the client's perspective, uh, that's going to end up being router one. So that's, that's our base. That's our playground. Let's get started. When we configure HSRP, we're going to be setting up something called a standby group. The reason Cisco calls it that is because just about every command that you type to configure HSRP starts off with that word, standby. Now, HSRP is configured on a per interface basis. This is not a global setting. It's not global configuration mode. I'm going to go into the interface, which is right here. This is fast Ethernet 0 slash 0. I'm going to go into the interface configuration mode and set up a group for this network that allows me to configure multiple groups so I can have, for instance, a completely separate group for this network, which is connected to fast Ethernet 0 slash 1. So I'm going to bring up, uh, let's bring up this and I'll open my console. So I've got router one. Let's just get ourselves oriented. Show IP interface brief. Um, I can see, you know, very basic configuration: fast Ethernet zero and zero slash one, uh, configured right here with the, with the IP addresses I mentioned. Now to set up HSRP, I'm going to go into interface fast Ethernet zero slash zero, and type in the command standby, and we follow that up with a group number. Now, you can see we've got all kinds of other stuff in here, uh, which we're going to talk about when we start getting into the tuning and tweaking, but most of the time, we're going to associate everything with the standby group. So, uh, think of it like a, like a little club. Like, these routers are like, hey, in order to talk and kind of communicate and support the, the devices using one virtual IP address, we've got to be in the same club. So, that's going to be what's considered the group number. So, I'm going to say standby group, and you can, you know, a lot of times you can use uh, group zero, group one, doesn't really matter. I'll just say standby one, you know, group one. Uh, and it comes up and says, okay, here is your options. Now, we're going to talk through just about every single one of these, but the first one we need to type in is IP. Notice it says enable HSRP and set the virtual IP address. Now we're going to get an error when we do this. I'm going to say, I'm going to set the IP to uh, 10.1.1.1, right? Because that's going to be essentially the, that's what everybody's default gateway is set to. That's going to be the uh, virtual or uh, phantom IP address that both of these routers are now going to respond to. I'm going to get an error when I hit the enter key. Does anyone know why? Just looking at this picture. 
Let's see if this error message fills it in. <laughs> yep. It says address cannot equal the interface IP address. VRRP, the open standard flavor of HSRP, allows you to have the virtual and the assigned IP address be the same thing. That's that's one I would say that's a that's a pretty strong advantage of VRRP, although not a, a, a smoking gun like, oh yeah, we're always going to use VRRP because of that. With HSRP, I have to come up with a different IP address for router one. Now, if we're in production, this is where our outage window begins, right? Because you can't just come in here and do IP address uh, 10.1.1. We'll just say 3, 255.255.255. Zero, and not expect the world to complain because right now everybody is pointing to a default gateway of dot one and we just now change this er, to dot three as in dot one no longer exists right so now what we can do is i'll hit the up arrow and bring dot one back i'm going to do standby we'll say group one and the, the group number is just a number it doesn't really matter as long as you use the same on both devices so i'm going to do standby one ip address 10 one 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 enter we've just i mean one command seriously that's that's it we've now got hsrp up and running uh and this router is responding for dot one so i can go to that client let's just do a, a quick test i'm going to do a let's do a ping 10.1.1.3 because that's going to be router one's new ip address right i'm going to do a show arp uh and we can see 10.1.1.3 we've got this this mac address right here now i'm going to ping 10.1 10.1.1.1 at the enter key <laughs> oh, okay, I was like, well, guys, that was a short demonstration. No, it just took a moment to, to, to get the ARP response back. Now I can come back and do a show ARP, and I can see that 10.1.1.1 is actually responding to this MAC address. Now, just so you know, this MAC address that you see right here highlighted is a well-known MAC address for HSRP. It's always, I mean, and this the, the reason I even mention this is this is pretty cool. You can go to your office. Go ahead and go to your office. Open a command prompt, if you can, and ping, uh, ping your default gateway. Because most companies use HSRP. Most larger companies that have redundancy will use a technology like that. And if you see 000C07AC, this, this essentially says this is running HSRP. This is a hexadecimal representation of your group number. So we chose group number one, right? So we see AC01 right there. So that's that's pretty cool that we're able to, it's a well-known MAC address. You're able to just look at it and say, oh, I, I know my network is running HSRP by that. Okay. So we now have uh, this virtual IP address that the client is speaking with, uh, but it's still only one router. We've got to go over to router two. Uh, bring up a connection here. And configure its side as well. So router two show IP interface brief, uh, pretty much mirrored config as router one just with dot two addresses interface fast Ethernet zero slash zero and let's do standby group, oh, standby group one. I have to join the same group number uh, followed by the IP address ten dot one dot one dot one. Enter. What we've done is now join a standby group to where both of those routers are going to be responding to the dot one IP address. If one of them fails, the other one takes over. Now, if that doesn't leave you with a whole slew of questions, something's wrong. <laughs> you kind of have some curiosity there. As in, well, okay, th that was one command. How, who, who's the active one? I mean, who's the one who's actively responding to those, those packets? And, and why did they become the active? And, and how long, how long until one detects that the other is down? I mean, all those questions should immediately come to your mind. Um, uh, or I just planted them there. Uh, so what, where we're at is we're actually down on step three. Well, let's verify some of that and answer some of those questions. Now, by the way, with step one and step two, this, this step doesn't necessarily have to be there if you did it right from the beginning. I reassigned the IP address here because uh, I said I have, to, I have to make a change, which you would typically have to do in a production network if you added maybe a redundant router uh, in there. However, if you're doing this from scratch, then, I mean, just do it right from the beginning and you can skip step two. So let's let's uh, take a look at step three, verification. Uh, I'm going to come back over to router one and, and check it out. We've got some syslog messages here. 
And it says, okay, uh, it looks like group one, it says HSRP group one has moved from a, a state of speak, as in I'm speaking, I'm listening for hellos from the other side, uh, to standby because he's like, well, I don't, I, I don't know if I'm allowed yet to become an active router. But once he hears from the other side, you notice it's like, like half a second later, uh, he goes, okay, well, you know what? I'm going to promote myself from standby to active to where I'm now forwarding the packet. Essentially, what happened in that half second is he heard from the other router and he is like, you are lesser than me. <laughs> I am going to become the active router of this little clan right here uh, because, well, because why? Let's take a look. Um, I'm going to do a show. Well, let's get out of here. Show standby. And just hit the enter key. And I can see uh, group one, it says state is active. There's been two state change. The last change was seven minutes ago or so. Virtual IP address is this. Active MAC, active virtual member that use a virtual MAC address uh, is this. Now, right here, here's the answer to one of those questions I asked. How often, you know, how long until they can tell the other one is down? Well, you remember from the concepts, HSRP by default sends a hello message once every three seconds. Ooh. It says, I'm going to consider my neighbor dead if I don't hear from them in 10 seconds. And then we start seeing some, some new stuff like preemption is disabled. Active router is local. The standby router, okay, this one makes sense. The standby router is 10.1.1.2. Okay, let's look back at the uh, diagram here. 10.1.1.2 is that guy. So he's saying, I am active and he is standby. Now let's answer the question, how did that happen? Well, when the routers boot up and you turn on HSRP on the routers, all of them are configured with an HSRP priority. Matter of fact, we saw it right here, just didn't mention it. Priority on every router is 100 by default. Here's the rule. More priority, better you are. So whoever has the higher priority wins the election and be becomes the active router. Now. You might say, well, I don't remember configuring a priority. You're right, we didn't. Both of these routers have a priority which is tied. As a matter of fact, if I go back here uh, to router 2 and do the same thing over here, notice he was like, okay, I'm moving from speak to standby. He never promoted himself to active. So let's do a show standby. And I can see that it's saying, okay, the active router is this guy, and his priority is 100. So now we're still stuck with the question, why, why did he become the active? Well, because the IP address is a tiebreaker. If the priorities are tied, then whoever has the larger IP address wins. In this case, router 1 has 10.1.1.3, router 2 had 10.1.1.2, so router 1 ends up taking the cake. Now, here's, here's one of the dilemmas. If router 1 goes down, well, here, let's, let's do it. Let's, let's, uh, let's do a little test. I'm going to do uh, go into interface fast ethernet at 0 slash 0, and let's do a shutdown on router one. So router one is now dead. Now, now notice, you might look at this because I know when it when I first did this, uh, when I was learning HSRP, it totally threw me off. I was like, whoa, wait a sec. This guy went, you know, went down and immediately this guy went to active. Wait, but wait, he's saying hello once every 10 seconds. How come, how come he, he just went active right away? He didn't wait the 10 seconds. Well, Cisco has configured a little feature. If you shut down the interface, the routers will say, hey, bud, I'm going down. I'm going down right now. So the other one immediately is like, okay, he's going down. I'm taking over. The same thing happens if you reboot a router. What a cool feature, right? Because that way, these kind of things can be done. Like, let, let's say I've got to do some maintenance on router one, right? And I'm like, okay, well, I got to, I got to take it offline. I can just go in and shut down this interface, shut it down, and immediately, shoop, this guy takes over. Traffic continues to flow unhindered. I can now take this guy offline and start doing what, you know, memory upgrade or whatever I needed to do. Uh, to that router without losing, you know, 10 seconds of production traffic. I mean, 10 seconds with voice over IP, that's a lot. That's a long time, right? So, uh, so this, this, is, uh, uh, this is a cool feature, but uh, the only way we'd really see this hold timer is if maybe we unplug the cable. That's something where the router can't be prepared for, or the router iOS froze because there was a memory leak or a bug uh, or something like that. Not that there would ever be a bug in Cisco devices. Uh, so, so we've got now. So this guy, we've now got router two. Let's do the show standby again. He's like, I'm I'm active. Uh, standby is unknown. You know, he went away. I don't know where he went. Uh, let's go back here. Let's do a no shutdown. 
Uh, this guy comes back up. He's like, okay, I'm breathing again. Let me send some HSRP hello packets uh, to the other side. Uh, as, you know, as this interface comes up, let's do a quick show standby. It's going to take a sec. Okay, there we go. Now, now look at this. Active router is 10.1.1.2 priority 100. So, okay, so, so wait a sec. This guy now came back online. It, it, now it's reporting, hey, I've, I've moved from speak to standby. Uh, he's like, okay, standby router is me. So, okay, so router 2 stayed the active router, right? And wait a sec, that doesn't make sense. Actually, it makes perfect sense. Uh, this feature is, uh, by default, something that Cisco has, uh, I'm trying to think of the best way to say it, has off, but uh, it may be a good feature. So, if you make a switch over to the standby router, right, something probably happened here. So, what Cisco says is, by default, we're going to turn off a feature called preemption. Preemption is a feature that says, okay, when this guy comes back online, he's going to say, I'm the higher priority. I should be the active router back in your place, router 2. <laughs> and I don't know if he says that that's forceful, but nonetheless, router 2 will say, okay, and demote itself back to standby. By default, preemption is off to where this guy, when he boots back up, he's going to be like, okay, well, it looks like there's already an active router. I'll just, I'll just uh, take the role of the standby unless something happens to the active. You may want that because you may say, well, you know, if, if this guy failed over, it probably happened for a reason. I mean, maybe this guy is crashing. Maybe he has some bad memory and he's rebooting once every five minutes or something like that. If that's the case, then I don't want constant uh, state changes flipping back and forth and back and forth and back and forth between these guys. I just want, you know, once, once the active router fails, uh, I want the standby router to take over and stay that way. Now, if you don't want that, let's now get into some of these options. The first one is going to be preempt. So let's go back to router one. Um, we can see it saying, okay, the active router is still router 2, priority 100. So I'm going to go into interface fast ethernet 0 slash 0. So let me, let me do uh, a, a two for one here. Um, I don't like allowing the highest IP address to dictate who wins this election. I want to set the priority. It, it gives me more control here. So on router 1, I'm going to do standby, and we'll type in the group number. We chose group number 1. So standby 1 priority, you see the priority level right here, uh, priority is going to be, and it's a value from 1 to 255, let's just say it's 115. You know, something, something that makes it more than router 2. Now I'm going to do a show standby. Uh, do a little show standby right here, and we can still see I'm priority 115, and that's great, but uh, I'm, I'm still not overthrowing that guy. I'm not taking over uh, because preemption is still not configured. So let's do a standby one, and you, you can see the magic command right here, preempt. <laughs> I, love, I love any command that says overthrow in the description. Overthrow the lower priority active routers, right? So I'm going to say I want to preempt myself. So now, as hello messages go to the other side, you can see the other side is going to be like, oh, I just got you know thrown off my mountain. I'm no longer king of the hill. Uh, I have you know this guy has now changed from standby to active. If I were to look over at router two, he's going to be like, yep, somebody just came and smacked me down. I am now uh, back in my standby role. Uh, so preempt is a great one that if you know if you want when this guy comes back online uh, for him to take over, uh, we can we can use that preempt. Okay. Hang on, did I did I mention everything? Oh yeah, I wanna I wanted to uh, add this in there. Uh, delay, such a if I if I were to just leave it at preempts, I mean that would be enough, and you can be like, okay, that's great. Delay is such a great command because it says I want to delay minimum. Uh, minimum, pff, let's, let's throw uh, 300 seconds in there. What, what's this mean? Okay. So here's, let's, let's paint a scenario here. This router, uh, I take it offline for maintenance or whatever and uh, take it away. So this guy becomes, you know, router two becomes active. Uh, this guy start, you know, I can say, okay, maintenance is done. I'm going to reboot him. So I plug him back in. He's now back online. And one of the first processes to come up is HSRP. So he's like, okay, I'm back. I am now active. And immediately, this guy's like, okay, I'm passing the torch, buddy. You're active. But Router 1 has yet to form its OSPF relationships. Router 1 has yet to really fill its routing table with valid routes. So he's like, I'm active and I've got nothing. Uh, so this guy starts coming in and saying, okay, I'm ready. I'm, I'm, I'm passing traffic. He's like, I don't even have a routing table yet. I haven't received a hello from my OSPF neighbor to really even know what's out there. Drop, 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 drop. So you have an outage when that happens. 
Likewise, uh, this, this preempt timer, this minimum timer uh, to take back over is very handy for if you have a router that's boot cycling. You know, sometimes it happens. I've seen it happen plenty of times where a router has bad flash or bad memory. You know, that those kind of things just happen. And, you know, it'll reboot and then stay up for a, a minute or two minutes. And then it's like, oh, crash, you know, vector 953 bug, you know, flip, you know, it kind of reboots again. Um, and you just start keep going through this boot cycle. What this say is the router has to be online and stay stable for a minimum of five minutes or 300 seconds or whatever you decide to set that time to before it ends up rebooting. So that's just, that's just a great practice, right? Um, so, so that's, that's the delay. Okay. What else, what else do we have in here? So we've got standby one. Uh, let's, uh, let's look at some of our other things. Uh, we've got the Mac. If we want to specify the virtual Mac address, we can do that. No real reason to do that, but you can, uh, priority. We talked about this. Okay. Timers. Timers, timers, timers. Timers allow you to uh, tweak those timers down. And in today's standards, it would be a recommended thing to do. When I do a show standby, uh, I can I can see, as we saw before, that the hello timer is 3 seconds, hold time is 10 seconds. That's great for the 1990s, early 2000 years, but as we move to this more split-second, outages not tolerated sort of society, uh, we need to tune that down. So we can do a standby, uh, we'll do uh, group 1, timers, and then we can type in uh, hello timer and we can say in seconds you know I could say okay I want to say hello once every one second uh, and then I want to have my hold time be maybe three seconds or something like that but look at this they also allow you to specify hello intervals in milliseconds that's what I'm talking about that's where people don't even notice when an outage a major outage of a router failure happens because I've gone in there and said my timer is actually specified in milliseconds and I'm gonna say once every Let's just go, let's, let's go crazy. A hundred mil, and you can, I mean, good grief, you can go low. 15 milliseconds, right? That's like, hey, hello, the other side's just, brrr. be careful. <laughs> be careful if you do that, because what are you increasing? Number one, network traffic, right? Because you're just like, and tons of hellos. Now, if you've got gigabit interfaces everywhere, okay, that's fine. What else are you increasing? Processor cycles. Right? Because every single one of those hello packets, the router has to be like, okay, I got it, okay, got it, okay, got it, okay, got it, okay. And then the other side is just constantly uh, getting those. And now with today's processors, that may be okay, and most of the time is fine. Just be careful. Don't, don't uh, throw them out there on a whim. So I can say, okay, and the hold timer in mill milliseconds uh, is, let's just say, 350. I always, I was like going a little beyond, like some people might say, well, 300, so that way I can miss three of them. Well, remember, if you set a, a, a hold timer or a dead timer of 300 milliseconds, then you never really get the third hello in there. You can only miss two hellos before it makes a switch because by time you hit 300 milliseconds, like the third hello is just arriving, just being processed. It doesn't have time. So 350 milliseconds allows you to miss three hellos and then do 50 milliseconds or like 49 milliseconds beyond, right? Uh, and then we're going. So that will allow, I mean, I, you know, GNS3 behind the scenes is like, oh, because you know, GNS3 is not a, a high production or a high traffic uh, emulator. So uh, so that's that's a way that we can tweak our timers. All right, let's see. Do we have anything else here? Standby one. Uh, ooh, ooh, ooh. Uh, authentication and track. Two, two big ones. Authentication is, I would say, highly recommended. Uh, and it's also highly recommended that you use MD5 uh, so that, that you're not uh, just just uh, sending a clear text password out there. Um, but uh, authentication allows you to protect other routers from joining this group. So if somebody, I mean, it, these are multicast messages. So if somebody out here opens Wireshark, they're going to see those hello packets being passed back and forth. And if they're malicious, they can say, okay, well, I'm going to emulate some hello packets so that I can jump in as the active router. And if they're really good, they can pull off a man in the middle attack because they can say, well, I see his priority is set to 115. Let me set my priority, you know, in this little hacking world to 130. So I preempt him and now I become the active dot one router and everything, you know, all the other traffic starts routing me and I, I pull off some kind of fancy routing and do a man in the middle so I can sniff everybody's traffic. You don't want that. So by turning on authentication, you can say there has to be a password in place to join this group. Now, if you just type in authentication and you type type in uh, a word like let's just say Bob that means all the other routers now have to supply the the authentication string of Bob 
in order to uh, in order to join the standby group. Okay. Now the problem with doing that is this is in plain text. So if we have hacker A down here with Wireshark open, there's nothing to keep him from seeing Bob inside of those hello packets and going, oh well, I'll just set my password to Bob then. That's not good. Now keep in mind. HSRP was developed long ago before Wireshark or Ethereal, the previous edition, was commonplace uh, in the world. So that it made sense back then. Uh, but now we want to do everything with MD5 authentication. Cisco gives us some flexibility to do that. So I'll do authentication MD5, which is hashing. Uh, so MD5 will, will actually add a little hash to the end of every single packet uh, that, that ensures both sides have the same key. We can do that by using a keychain or a key string. Keychain is super flexibility. Uh, meaning, uh, a keychain it means I go to global config mode. Here, let me, let me show you. Let me exit back out here. Uh, so this is before I would uh, configure authentication. I would go to global config mode, and I would do keychain. Oh, hang on, keychain, no dash. And you could just name it. I'll just name it uh, Jeremy. All, and it is case sensitive, so I'll do all capitals. Now I can actually come into this keychain. I mean, visualize in your mind your key set, right? I've got like 50 keys of 48 of them. I have no idea what they do. Uh, so, so think of this this big key set of keys. That's what you can configure. But instead of 48 or 50 keys, I can configure 2,147,483,647 keys. <laughs> so the the beauty of this is I can configure this key string. So I could say, well, well, key number zero, let's say the first key, uh, is going to be, let's just do the key string of, of uh, Cisco rocks, exclamation point. Like that's the key string. We have to have that on both sides, right? So then I can also say, okay, and I'm going to accept this key for, let's just say, uh, it's 929 uh, AM right now here in uh, beautiful uh, sunny Arizona. I'm going to say the first day of the month, I'm going to say uh, the 16th of January. And any, by the way, it's so easy to mess this up. A lot of times uh, here in America, we put the, the month first. So you put one thinking you're putting in uh, January, but one really represents the day. When it says month in all capitals, it just means type in the name of the month. You can type in Jan or January, January, whatever you want to do. Um, so I can put January uh, 2013 is when I'm going to accept this guy. And I'm going to accept it uh, infinitely. It is an eternal key. Or I'm going to accept this until, uh, you know, and I can say, well, 9.29 a.m. on the, do you see what I'm doing here? I mean, this, this it gets heavy. You know, the 18th of February, 2013, uh, in, in hit enter. So, so I've, I'm saying I'm accepting it, and then I can say I'm going to send it during a certain, in the same, same arguments there, you know. So what this allows me to do is have my router say, okay, I'm, I'm using this key, I'm using this key, I'm using this key. Okay, I've reached a certain date and time. Change keys, new key, new key, new key. Okay, new date and time. Change keys, new key, new key, new key. So, I mean, good practice, right? You, you've all experienced like, okay, your password has expired. It's time to change it. Same thing in the router world. If you keep your HSRP authentication key the same forever, I mean, I'll say it's better than nothing, but there's more chance that somebody can compromise it. So the key chain allows you to uh, to go in and have it automatically uh, change keys. So you can configure you know, 2 billion keys in there if you want to, or you can go the easy route, which is where you go into that interface. Nope, what am I doing? Uh, standby, group one authentication and uh, we'll do MD5 so instead of saying keychain by the way and this is how you would associate that keychain I would say Jeremy and attach the keychain I configured from global config to this but I'm not doing that I can say I want the easy road I want to do the key string of Cisco rocks exclamation point S uh, so, so now, I, and that's just simple, right? Now I have to type in Cisco rocks on both sides, and now we're sending a hashed version of the key uh, in, in every single packet. I'm just trying to think. Uh, I, I have a thought. I just had the thought that not, I know not everybody understands hashing at this point. Like, so if you understand hashing, fast forward like two minutes or however long I'm going to take to explain this. Uh, but I want to give you the flyby overview because it's it's a big misunderstanding. Uh, people confuse all the time, and I used to do it too, hashing with encryption. 
right? So, so let's just say we, we've got HSRP running uh, between the two routers, and I configure authentication between the two, and I say, okay, Cisco, I don't know why I have to say it this way, rocks uh, is, is the password uh, that I'm using between those. What that is, is it's uh, it's part of a hashing algorithm known as MD5, right? This is not encryption. So here's what happens. Now, every single hello packet, every single update packet, every single communication between these two routers will now have a hash attached to it. It is not encrypted. Somebody, you know, again, our, our little hacker down here with Wireshark could easily capture one of those packets and see that it's an HSRP hello. He would see all the criteria of what, what uh, IP address it's using, what standby group. I mean, he'd capture a lot of data. He just wouldn't be able to join the group because here's, here's the way hashing works. When there is an MD5 algorithm uh, that is created. There's also a SHA-1 algorithm, which is considered more secure, but MD5 still works just fine. Uh, just think of a, a, a big math formula, right? So what happens is every single time the router sends a packet for HSRP, let's just say it's a hello packet. It's going to say, okay, I've got my hello. I'm going to, I'm going to take all of that, that, uh, the data that's inside of that packet and put it inside of the MD5 uh, blender, which is plugged into our little wall. So I'm going to throw the hello in there. I'm going to throw Cisco rocks in there. Raw. And then I'm going to throw, you know, maybe a random number or something like that that I've, I've decided. I'll put it in the packet so everybody knows what the random number is. Uh, but I'm going to throw that in there. And I'm going to hit the puree button. That's what MD5 is. And it spits out what's known as an MD5 hash. The, the router now sticks that hash at the end of every single packet that it sends. Now, again, every single hash will be different because every single packet is different. It has a different timestamp on there. It'll have different random numbers, those kind of things. So we've got the hello packet. It says puree. Spits out this little MD5 hash right here uh, that it sticks on the end of that. That when this guy receives that packet before he ever processes it he's going to do the same thing he's going to take that packet uh, and say whoa 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 before i accept this as a hello packet i'm going to take that hello i'm going to take uh, the the random number that i see inside there random numbers in in clear text so he's able to grab that uh, i'm going to take the uh, the the secret password cisco rocks and throw it all in to the same md5 blunder and hit the puree button and bzz, spit out an MD5 hash. It's going to say, okay, well, before I accept this, I'm going to compare this to the hash that I see at the end of that packet. If it's the same, I'll accept it. Because I know that all these same criteria uh, were, were put in on this side, right? And the only way, I mean, if one bit is different, you know, if, if maybe the hello packet ends up a little different or, or the hash ends up a little, I mean, if one minute bit is different the md5 hash will be different and it won't join so so how does this protect us when this guy says i want to join your group he can very well send hellos that look like my group number it says i've got the same virtual ip i've got the same uh same standby group number i've got all the stuff the same right but what he doesn't have is this missing value cisco rocks because he's going to to you know j send his hello packet and it's going to come up here and it's going to say okay well you've got all you you look like hsrp you smell like it but but when i when i look at your hash right here it's not coming out the same if if you were to if you were to have used the correct pre-shared key and that's what that's technically known as if you would have used the correct one it wouldn't come out this this the, the way that this hash looks so he's missing a piece of that formula, and that's why it's there. So, so MD5 is not encryption. It just ensures that everything that is sent is only coming from the sources that have the same pre-shared key. And yet, that pre-shared key is never sent across the wire at all. It's always hidden behind the scenes in a math formula. Okay, so let's get both routers configured. We've got router 1 which uh, I've got the, the key string typed in there, so I'll just hit the enter key. Um, now, it's going to lose very quickly, well, within 10 seconds, uh, its relationships. It's like, oh, bad authentication. You know, the other side doesn't have the same key. Uh, so, so, you know, router 2 is now dropped out until I get in there. And, well, actually, notice he, he now became his own little uh, active router because he's like, well, it looks like router 1's down. That, that could actually pose a, a big problem. So I'm going to go into fast ethernet 0 slash 0 and do uh, standby group 1 authentication and we'll do uh, md5 key 
string Cisco rocks exclamation point in the intergame. game. All right. And now you can see, oh, what now? Now we're back in we're back in play. We've got uh, active move back to speak because we've just joined the group. And within a few moments, he's going to say, OK, well, now I've demoted myself from speak to ooh, speak to standby. Uh, so he's now uh, moved back into his original role. OK, last thing I want to show you on the tuning side is the timers. I'm going to say stand or not timers, but uh, tracking standby group one track. Remember I said in the concepts, uh, one of the things that we can do is watch another interface. And if that interface goes down, we can decrement the priority. So, so in this case, this let, let's look at this scenario. We may have the serial 0 slash 0 go offline on our active router. And let, me, let me just clear this all off. There we go. We may have the serial, serial uh, 0 so as zero go offline. However, hello messages are still being sent between router one and router two. So router two is like, oh yeah, you're you're still online, buddy. So what we can do is configure interface tracking that says if this interface goes offline, I want to decrement my priority. So my priority will drop, allowing this guy to say, okay, well now I exceed your priority, so I'm going to take over. Uh, however, in order for him to do that, what feature must be configured on him? Preempt. You got it. Did I spell that right? Preempt. That doesn't look right. But uh, preempt uh, has to be configured on there. Now I know we only configured that on router one when I was uh, illustrating this. So first thing I'm going to do before I even configure anything more, because otherwise I know it's going to come back to haunt us, is go on to router two and configure preempt. So he will take over if router one's priority gets lower as well. So now let's jump over to router one. And I'm going to go to, we're still under fast Ethernet 0 slash 0. I'm going to do standby group 1, uh, track. I'm going to track one of the interfaces, and we'll say serial, or uh, well, actually, in this, this case, it's not serial 0, though. It's, it's actually uh, fast Ethernet 0 slash 1. So I'm going to say track fast Ethernet 0 slash 1. And I'll say the decrement value uh, will be, let's just say, 50. Or, I mean, we only have to go below 100, right? Uh, we're at 115, so let's just go 20. You know, maybe not as devastating. So 20, hit the enter key. So now, let's just do a quick show standby. Uh, I'm looking right now, it looks like we are a priority uh, 115. Oh, why is my standby router unknown? Unknown. Did I change something? Hang on. Let me just do a quick show run interface, fast ethernet 0 slash 0. Cisco rocks, priority 115, timers preempt. Looks good. Let's go over to router 2. Let's do uh, show standby. Uh, no, he's he's seeing the active router. Seven state changes. Mm -hmm. Next, hello. So he's receiving hellos. Oh, wait a sec. Show, no, no, I did show standby. Standby router is unknown. Wow. Hey, let's just let's just test it. Let's do interface fast at zero slash zero shut down. Let's just see if uh if this guy takes over. Huh. Well, he did. Okay. So let me do a no shutdown. Okay. Okay, so preempt took effect. He kicked him back down. Show standby. Standby router is unknown. Show standby. Okay, okay, hang on, he just went back to standby. Okay, this is weird. It's working. <laughs> the other guy sees this, so that means authentication is working okay. Uh, so he's, he's seeing him as the active router. It's just like this guy is like, I don't know who you are. But it's working. I'm going to have to chalk that up to a weird anomaly. I, I honestly have never seen that before. I, and, uh, you know, in the GNS3 world, weird things happen from time to time. Although that that is something that I, I wouldn't have expected to happen. But, I mean, they're obviously communicating. Uh, this guy's seeing. He's sending hello. So it's 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 as if he's, he's a phantom standby. Okay. So... 
What was I doing? Okay, uh, interface tracking. So did I do that? Let me just do a show run fast Ethernet at zero slash zero. Okay, I've got the track fast Ethernet at zero slash one. So let's now go in and let's do interface fast Ethernet at zero slash one and do a shutdown. So if I lose if I lose connectivity on fast Ethernet at zero slash one, now I can go back and do a show standby. I'm so, f I'm so flustered from that that I can't even type anymore. But look at this. It shows, it shows now. Okay, so for instance, it, now it's seeing the active router is the other guy. That's, that's just odd. Um, so it says standby router is local, and I've now demoted my priority to, to 95. Now, why? Because it's, it's 115 minus the decrement of 20 since fast ethernet 0 slash 1 just went down. This guy, because he has preempt configure, let's do a show standby on him. Because he has preempt configure, has now gone active and sees the other guy as the standby oh, until until I go in to fast Ethernet at 0 slash 1 and power it back on. Now, I don't have any timers set on the preempt, so as soon as fast Ethernet at 0 slash 1 resumes and gets connectivity back, you can see uh, he now says, okay, I'm back. I'm now a higher priority. I'm preempting you. So that's your way of configuring interface tracking. So once again, Jeremy's time warped thinking has failed him, thinking he could actually cram all three of these protocols into a single nugget. But I will say this is the foundation. Once you get HSRP and you're like, okay, that makes sense. VRRP is exactly, almost exactly the same. Same command, same everything as HSRP. And you know, GLBP is just some minor tweaks here and there. So I guarantee you the next nugget will be able to knock out both of those. But now you have a really good understanding of HSRP. It's more than just, uh, I mean, you can get it running just by using one command, standby, group number, and what IP address do you want to assign it. Uh, but beyond that, you can set up the priorities, the preemption, the interface tracking, the authentication, the hello timers, the dead timers. I mean, all the different options that we talked about there that they all give you flexibility in how hsrp is working okay good for now i hope this has been informative for you and i'd like to thank you for viewing